Welcome to the first episode of Trash to Cash, where we take auction vehicles that have a ton of issues and we turn them into frontline ready vehicles. This is the part of a dealership that most people do not get to see. A lot of people think that some of the cars we buy from auction, we just clean up and put out for sale. However, what they don't realize is it actually takes a lot of work to get them frontline ready, especially if we want them to run and last long for the customer. The first vehicle we're looking at today is a 2006 Volkswagen Passat. It's a really clean car inside and out for the most part. I did drive it here when we brought it from auction. The uh, hood's clear coat is a little fucked up, but that's okay. The interior is actually not too bad. Um, it definitely needs a detail for sure. You know, carpets are a little dirty. Seats need to be wiped down and everything. All right, let's fire it up. Okay, so first thing I noticed right off the rip is we do have a check engine light. We also have a TPMS light, but I'm not as concerned about that as I am about the check engine light. I did drive it here, so I know it drives really good. It is the 4Motion VR6. The other thing I realized in this car is the radio. I hate these radios, but the other thing I realized in this car is the radio does not play. So none of the speakers are working. Now the next thing I noticed besides that the speakers don't wanna work is this AC controller is getting no power. So nothing is turning on, no blower is coming on, none of that stuff. Figuring out what exactly is wrong with this AC controller requires a good bit of diag because it could be the wiring, could be a fuse, or it could be the controller itself has just gone bad. So it, it, we have to do a good bit of diag before we can just start ordering parts. I do also want to go ahead and plug my OBD reader up to figure out what that check engine light is for and see what's going on under the hood. Um, if there's any leaks or anything, let's take a look under the hood. So looking under the hood, it looks fairly okay. I don't see any uh, major oil leaks or anything like that that we should be too concerned about. Cool, it's kind of low. Let's see it on there. All right, so first things first, let's grab the uh, OBD reader and scan the vehicle to see what's going on with it. Got our OBD reader here. Car's still running. Let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, let's see what's going on with this engine. All right, no communication with HVAC control module. That would explain the AC controller not working. And then two codes for O2 sensors. We got bank one, sensor one, bank two, sensor two. This is something that we can fix very easily. Um, no communication with HVAC control module. That obviously could be the module itself, just not getting power. Um, I am gonna peel back the module and look and see if any of the wires are corroded or broken or you know whatever the deal is. If there are none, then we're gonna go ahead and order another module. I do want to check the fuse box for the fuses, make sure none are blown. So to check the fuses, I'm going to use a little tester here just to make sure all the fuses are good. I don't want to pull them out one by one, so this is what I'm going to use. To check the fuses for the radio and the AC controller, the car doesn't actually have to be running. Just got to put the key in, push it into place, make sure the electronics are on. So I got it connected right here. Let's make sure that it works. It does. Let's check these fuses one by one. All the fuses are good in here. So with all the fuses being good in here, we've rolled out a bad fuse out here. There is a fuse box in the car also. So let's check that. So after popping the clips, pull that off, get access to the fuse box, hook it up to the ground, and start testing. After checking all the fuses, they are all good. So that rules out any fuse box issues, any fuses that may have been blown as the reason for that AC controller not coming on. All right. 
All right, so we got our tools. And because we need to check the radio as well, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the radio from the vehicle. Got the radio out. Just gotta disconnect uh, connectors and So we've got the radio pulled out. I'm gonna check the wiring separately from all this. Remember, this is not a tutorial video, so I'm not exactly gonna show y'all how to do all this stuff. All right, got it. With that trim piece off, I'll take the rest of the bolts out. There we go. So we've got the AC controller out. Now we're gonna go ahead and figure out what in the fuck is going on. I did a visual inspection on this thing and it seems like it's fine. I ran some power through it and it does cut on. I wanna check and see if there's power and ground to the plugs that connect back here. If there is, then there is a deeper issue. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm just making this bigger than it needs to be and I'm 99% sure it's gonna end up being the smallest fucking thing. Here's how we're gonna check power and ground, all right? So we get our little handy tester. I'm gonna hook up the tester to ground. After connecting that, I'm gonna put your key in. You don't have to start the car just in the on position where all the lights are on and everything. And then you want to grab your tester. I've already read the diagram. I know the first pin is power. The second pin is ground. So we touch the first pin. And you see we have power. Let's find out if we have ground. To find out about the ground, you have to reverse this. Instead of connecting this to ground, you connect it to power. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this, connect it to a positive. We're gonna touch this to the ground. And if it comes on, then we have a ground. It's on. So we got power and ground going to that. So there is another issue. I've read through multiple diagrams and there is another fuse box in this car. Um, and there is one fuse in that fuse box that has to do with AC and heat. Let's check it. All right, we got our handy screwdriver. There is a slot for it, so I'm pretty sure there is a fuse box back here. There is a fuse box back here. The diagram that I read said that slot 15 was the AC, the AC and heat, but there is no fuse in slot 15. It says it's supposed to be a 5 amp fuse there. I have a 5 amp fuse. So let's put it in. Okay, I mean, that, that 5 amp fuse is good. I did probe the pins in there to make sure they had power, and they do. Let's plug in the controller and see what happens. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna be really upset. Okay, so we have the controller plugged in. Let's put the key in and see if it powers up. If it powers up, I'm gonna be really upset because I just did all that extra stuff for nothing. So, let's power it up. Holy shit. It works. AC is kicking on. The controller now works. The heated seats are working. Let's fire the car up real quick. What I'm gonna do is reset the flaps. The flaps are what change the air direction from here to the bottom to up there. So I'm gonna reset them. And what you do for that is you press the Econ button and this button and you just wait and then when it's done this will go back to normal there we go they've gone back to normal AC is working there we go it's blowing nice and cold too I did hear the AC compressor kick on let's make sure the fans kick on yep fans are working down there And the AC compressor is spinning down there. Okay, so we've solved the AC issue without having to order any parts. 
All it took was a five amp fuse. Let's move on to the radio. I hate those style radios, so I've gone ahead and ordered a new radio for that car. I've went ahead and ordered the wiring harness and the DIN kit as well. And as you can see, everything is here. We have the wiring harness, connector kit, the antenna kit, the DIN, and a little single DIN radio. It was cheap, but it does the job. Uh, it's got Bluetooth, it's got an aux cord, and it's got a USB on it. So what we need to do now is I need to wire this radio's harness to this harness. The old radio in this car is just really worn out. The screen is burned and it has no sound. All right, so I've got the tools that I'm gonna be using here. We've got all our hardware, the whole kit, and the radio. All right, let's get started. Got the radio out of the box. Got everything wired up. I wanna hook the radio up in the car right now and make sure we have sound and make sure it works correctly. Let's plug the radio up, make sure that it works. Gotta get the harness out of here, get it plugged up. All right, gotta plug in the antenna. Let's see, All right, I'm gonna set this right here. Put the key in. Okay, so the radio is working. As you can see, it is on. But unfortunately, there's still no sound. We need to figure out why that is. Let's start doing some diag. It seems that we don't have any power to the amplifier at all. I'm wondering if the main power wire that Volkswagen likes to put under the driver's side main carpet is cut or broken. I'm gonna peel back the carpet and see if that's the issue. But for this, we need to remove that bolt right there. Got the bolt out. We need to pull this plastic piece off. Pull that plastic piece out, set it to the side, peel back the carpet, peel back this. It is in this harness right here. This cluster of wires that's running down is where I'll find the power wire. I gotta remove the seat. I need to access the factory amplifier, which is down here. To remove the seat, we need these special star bits that Volkswagen puts on everything. Got one. Got two. Got it. Put it with the rest of them. Gotta get the fourth one. Got number four. So that was a pain in the ass, but after peeling the carpet back, I was able to pull the harness out. And I'm pretty sure my issue lies in this harness. So I'm gonna take it apart. So I did find a corroded broken wire. Um, I did put it back together. There we go, we're good to go. Let's see if this thing has power now because it didn't earlier. Look at that, look at that, perfect. Let's plug this amplifier in, see if we get um, sound at all. All right, and if we do, then that was our issue. If we don't, then we have a different issue. All right, let's find out, let's see, I got the keys. We got the amplifier plugged in. We have this wire fixed. It was uh, a little corroded, so and it was cut. 
wasn't providing the proper amount of voltage. So let's put the key in, radio's on. Do we get sound? No, we do not. We have another problem down here. Let's figure it out. All right, so I think I may have found the issue. You can see through this mess of wires here that this wire is fixed. Now, as soon as I fixed this wire, I plugged the amp back in. There was a 30 amp fuse in there. It blew, right? I got a new one. And if I put that 30 amp fuse in there, watch what happens. See, it blew immediately. No hesitation, okay? Here's what I did. You see the amplifier, it's plugged in, okay? Disconnect the amplifier. You see the two plugs, they're disconnected. We're gonna put another fuse back in. Grab another 30 amp fuse and put it back in. Okay? It did not blow like the other one did, okay? That 30 amp fuse is still good. So you got your power wire here. This is the wire that I fixed. This is the one that was uh, corroded, cut, messed up, right? With the fuse in, it's good when it's unplugged. Now, as soon as I plug this in to the amplifier, the fuse blows out. Now, what that tells me is the amplifier has a short. I'm pretty sure because of the placement of this amplifier, Volkswagen set the amplifier right here under the driver's seat um, with, honestly, just a grate on top of it. So any water, rain, mud, whatever that got in here that wet this was getting all over that amplifier. And that would explain why the bottom of the amplifier looks corroded. Let's open up this amplifier and see what it looks like on the inside. If it's all rusted out to hell and back on the inside, then the amplifier is what's causing the short. So I've got the amplifier here, and it's got, from what it looks like, four bolts or four screws that hold it on. Two on the front, two on the back. Let's take them out and see what's going on. I mean, I can already tell, and you might not be able to see it, but I can tell that there's some corrosion and stuff that's not supposed to be on there. Let's take this. Okay, you can see like little white powder starting to come out of it. And I'm 90% sure this amplifier is just fucked. And if it is, we're gonna have to go to a junkyard grab a new one, or just order it online. Okay, let's flip it over. Moment of truth. Oh God, look at that. Look at that, that's corrosion. And I can tell you right off the rip, yup, this amplifier is fucked. Here, I'll show you. You can see up here on the sides, you've got corrosion on all these pins. The screws, which are also grounds for this board, are all corroded. And then you have these pins that are all rusted. That's the source of the short right there. So with that being said, I think we need a new amplifier. I managed to get my hands, this is the old one, I managed to get my hands on another amplifier. And this one, as you can see, is a lot cleaner than this one. It's all corroded. Okay, so I'm out here at the car, got the amplifier. I'm gonna set it right here for right now. Remember, the old fuse blew, so you gotta put another fuse in. Put that fuse in. Radio's on, it's set. It's turned up. Let's plug in this amplifier. I'm gonna be really upset if this doesn't work. Got the first one plugged in. There's a moment of truth. Shut. Kick some 
96. She's alive. Well, I can't fix that. But I can fix it. It's alive. We got sound. All the speakers are working good. And the ones in the back. Nothing better than that feeling of getting it working after all this time of Diag and a whole bunch of parts. Finally got the new amp in. Everything's plugged in. A wire that was cut, fixed, and we're good. Just gotta put everything back together now. I got everything out of my way. Everything back down there. Wires across, the new amplifier, the plate. And I got some zip ties because obviously I don't want these wires running through the floor just all loose like this. So I'm going to put some zip ties on these wires. Got the wire all together. Got to put it back where it came from now. All right, just got to peel back the carpet. Get it back under, under around this little bracket. There's one, there's two. So we got it ran the correct way that it was. Set the carpet back down. All right. Cool, got them tightened down. Plug it up. Make sure here. Got it bolted down, got the bracket back in place. This thing ain't going nowhere. Got it plugged in, everything. Come on, there we go, there we go. Got that radio bolted in. Got to bolt in the uh, AC control module and put the trim pieces back on. We should be good to go. That looks way better than it did before. And now everything works. Cool, got all the tools out. Radio's working, AC is working. Still has a check engine light for O2 sensors, but the exhaust has been modified and there is no place to put O2 sensors. So I guess I'm gonna have to sell it the way it is. I'm gonna make sure though, whoever buys it knows that it needs O2 sensors. And I can prove that easily by plugging in my OBD reader. All we need now is a detail. Detailer just left, look on the inside. Looks nice and clean, everything's shiny. Looks great. Thank you guys for watching my very first Trash to Cash episode. It means a lot. I'm still learning the whole editing thing. Hopefully you guys can give me constructive criticism in the comments. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Follow me on TikTok to see what I'm doing whenever I'm not on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram as well. I'll put the links in the description of this video. Thank you guys for watching.